At one point in time, the king or queen of England ran the world. That was during the British Empire. But now the Queen of England is queen to 16 different countries in the Commonwealth. You may think she doesn't have any real power and it's all ceremonial. But you'd be wrong, Queen Elizabeth II is actually worth billions of pounds and has a lot of power. And there's a crazy amount of things she can do in the UK that you or I would go to prison for years for. I'm Charlie and today we're going to look at laws Queen Elizabeth does not have to follow. But before MI6 takes me out, subscribe and press the notification bell too. Coming up first, we have taking children. You probably think I'm kidding when I say the Queen can come along and take your child if she wanted to. But under UK law, that is actually the case. It may sound ridiculous, but Queen Elizabeth by law protects all children. But what does this mean? Well, the law states Queen Elizabeth is the official guardian of all children in the UK. Therefore, she technically has the right to take anyone's child from them. Now, don't worry, she's never actually done this, as far as we know. But technically, this means she has custodial rights to every kid in the UK. And within her own family, the laws are even more strict. The royal family has a very strange custody agreement with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's child. The Queen has total custody of Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's new baby. As I said, she's the legal guardian to every kid in the UK, but they have this one very specially written odd agreement within the royal family. Next up is speed limits. Former Prime Minister David Cameron recently released his memoirs. And in those memoirs, he said the Queen once took him in a car ride and went way too fast. The Queen was not pleased with this and actually asked him to remove it from his book. But it's not for fear of her being arrested. That is because any speed limit can be broken by the Queen anywhere in her country. Recently, her husband, Prince Philip, got into a car crash and got off with it scot-free. Not only is the Queen and her husband known for breaking the speed limits, they also never wear seatbelts. So I guess the Queen really does take a lot of advantage of this law she does not have to follow. Next up is eating rare animals. Go to some parts of the world, and I'm sure eating a swan and dolphin is A-OK. -okay. But that is not the case in the United Kingdom. That is unless you're the Queen, as she is legally allowed to eat swans and dolphins. The Queen actually owns all swans in the United Kingdom. She also owns all sturgeons, whales and dolphins in the waters around the UK. This dates back to a 1324 law during the time of King Edward II. And because she has total ownership over these animals, she can do whatever she wants to them. If she wanted to, she could hunt them all and sell them, or even eat them. But as far as I know, the Queen does not eat swan. Next up is wars. Whenever war is waged anywhere on Earth, there's lots of debate about whether it's legal or illegal. But I'll save you some time. If the Queen started the war, then it's legal. That's right, the Queen can declare war against any country at any moment. You may think that her power is all ceremonial, but she can really do this and Parliament will have to follow suit. The UK government must take immediate action if she ever declared war against any country. So world leaders, don't get on the wrong side of this old lady. Not only that, if the UK government ever want to go to war, they officially need the Queen's permission. And any war she does start is not a war crime by law. Next up, we have passports. Do you ever feel like you have to show your passport every five minutes at the airport? Well, one woman who does not have that problem is the Queen. The Queen does not have a passport, nor does she need one. But she still makes hundreds of flights every year. She's actually one of the few people on Earth who does not have an official identity document. You see, all passports are given out in her name. So for that reason, she does not need one herself, as she's on every passport anyway. Plus, let's be honest, I'm pretty sure every airport worker knows who the Queen is. But that being said, it does still seem pretty unfair that we have to show our passports thousands of times when we go to the airport. Next up is FOI requests. An FOI request is a freedom of information request. Depending on what country you're from, you likely have some form of this. A freedom of information request allows the press and the public to ask any kind of question to those in power. This usually means governments, and in countries that have them, monarchies too. But the royal family uses its power to block this law from expanding onto them. 
they're absolutely free to not provide any kind of information to any freedom of information request. Personally, I think this is totally anti-democratic and not okay. Many say that the Queen is hiding super secret information, for example her owning parts of the Bank of England. But because she's exempt from all freedom of information requests, we simply do not know. Next up is court appearances. If you want to take the Queen to court, then I'm sorry but you're out of luck there too. Legally, it's impossible to take legal action against the Queen. You can't file a criminal or civil suit against her. People in many countries, including the UK, USA and India, have tried and failed. She also does not have to give evidence in court. And she can't be prosecuted even if you have a good claim against her. You could have Harvey Specter or the greatest lawyer in the world and they will not be able to bring a case down on old Liz. Next up is driving license. Okay, this is kind of the same story as passports. Much like passports, driver's licenses are registered by Her Majesty. This means they're given out in the Queen's name and therefore she does not need one. The Queen has been driving since she was 16, but she's never had a driving license or had to take a driving test. During WW2, she actually drove an ambulance, and she's said to be very good at driving, although she does like to go very, very fast. Her husband, on the other hand, is not such a good driver as we covered before. Next up is paying taxes. If one thing's guaranteed in life, it's taxes. That is, unless your name is Queen Elizabeth. Despite the royal family costing the UK £67 million every year, the Queen does not have to pay any taxes. However, since 1992, she has voluntarily paid taxes. How much she pays, however, does not seem to be public information, as I can't find it anywhere. But something tells me it's nowhere near £67 million. And finally on the list, we have vandalism. Now, this may sound like kind of a funny one, but the Queen does actually have a right to break people's property. This law only applies under certain circumstances, such as a national emergency. But in this event, the Queen has the right to break, enter and destroy any property she wants. That does sound pretty scary, but I can't imagine going down to get something from the fridge at 2am and seeing the Queen has broken into my house. But legally it could happen and I couldn't do anything about it. So there we go guys, those are some laws the Queen does not have to follow. But now it's time to make your opinion heard. Do you think the Queen should have to obey these laws or do you think it's okay for her to be above the law? Vote in the poll in the top right corner. If you want some more amazing videos, check out my second channel. There will be a link to that on screen in a moment. But as always, thank you for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.